So, uh, hello everyone. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank to, to our host, Dev Experts, for, for the opportunity to talk uh, in front of such great audience. I'm not a native English speaker, so I hope you are going to understand my English. Well, even when I speak with Americans, they are saying to me, no problem, speak in Bulgarian, we will understand you. So, okay, uh, let's start with the presentation. And after that, as you understand, there will be some questions. Originally, I asked for iPhone as a gift, but they decided uh, to give you a blanket. I don't know why. <laughs> so the blanket will be the, the gift. Okay, a few words about me. Uh, my name is Dimo Mitev. I am from Sofia, from Bulgaria, working as engineering manager at Progress. This is the ex telluric company, uh, actually, Five or six years ago, Progress acquired Telluric, uh, some of you might know, and now uh, Telluric is operating under this brand. Um, my team, um, in which I'm working, uh, we are producing some, something like BAS, which is backend as a services for mobile applications. This is one of the projects that I'm leading, and other project is a native chat, which is something like a chatbot. These are the two projects for which um, I'm working. Um, I'm mm, in the IT sphere for more than 17 years, working mainly as a QA, uh, and for the past several months, I'm working as engineering main manager. I'm also ISTQB certified. I guess most of you know what is ISTQB. This is very popular certification uh, body, and I'm certified Scrum Master. Uh, my experience as lecturer is uh, more than 10 years. Um, I'm leading uh, lectures in several different academies and uh, universities. And for the past two years, I'm leading the QA direction in uh, Softuni, uh, QA Fundamentals and QA Automation course. And um, I'm not using very much Facebook, but uh, you can find me in LinkedIn. The uh, moment of the, the same name, actually. So. Uh, my presentation will be very short, and actually, this is not exactly a presentation, but rather a showcase, something that we managed to achieve in uh, my team, and something that I would like to share with you. I will be very happy if you uh, find uh, the stuff useful, and more than happy if you try uh, at your project, uh, of course, if it makes sense, and if you haven't achieved such stuff already. So. Here is the agenda. Actually, it is pretty short. I'm going to talk about the simple QA workflow. The problem that we are facing with the simple, that we faced with this simple workflow and how we managed to switch to the advanced QA workflow and few words about the magic. Well, there is no rabbit in head, but some other kind of magic. Um, okay, so. The simple QA workflow, uh, in my opinion. Most of you are working for some kind of different uh, projects and you're using some kind of software development lifecycle. Probably uh, you're all working in agile environment following Scrum or Kanban or Scrumban or something like that. And usually in most of the projects we have, we have some kind of requirements, some kind of uh, uh, functionalities, some kind of user stories that we need to implement. Our team, our developers need to implement this stuff. And the QAs, what are doing the QAs? Usually the QAs are first sta uh, starting with the analysis of the requirements and dealing with some problems in the requirements, asking questions and etc. And once this step is clear, we are starting with the manual test case creation and execution. Well, pretty simple step, but in my opinion, this is the most important step. Why? Because in order to, to test something in the right way, you, you need to have very good analytical and problem solving skills. You need to define the exact manual test cases that should be executed in order to find all the possible problems. This is the tough step in the QA work, believe me. Okay, now, you're choosing some kind of techniques, whether it will be uh, 
boundary value analysis or equivalence partitioning, decision table, and etc. There are uh, plenty of bunch of different test case techniques that you can use in order to create your manual test case and execute. Pretty simple step, nothing special, but the tough one in my opinion. Okay, next. Nowadays, everyone is talking about automation and indeed the automation is very, very important. But again, be careful what you're automating because if, if you're doing the things manually and you're doing them wrong, the automation will help you nothing more but just to execute the same things faster. I guess you all agree. So be careful what you're automating. Once you're sure that you're executing the things in the right way, then you start with your automation activities. If you don't have any kind of experience with automation, choose some kind of tool. There are a lot of different tools like Selenium, Playwright, Cypress, and etc. and start with your automation activities. So this was the, exactly the case in my company. Uh, we were creating the manual test cases. Uh, after that, we were executing these automated test cases. And once there is a new version of the software, we were executing these test cases. And the final step, we were, were analyzing the results. What test passed, what test wrong, uh, um, what test failed, uh, sorry, and what are the problems, whether they're in the software, whether they're in the test, whether they're in the environment, it doesn't matter. You're simply performing the so-called result analysis. Nothing special. Okay. In my problem, uh, in my uh, opinion, these this, uh, steps that I managed to present you a few seconds ago are very good. But the release to the market was very, very slow. We were releasing very slow, like the uh, <laughs> letters that are appearing. <laughs> yeah. I'm not very good with the PowerPoint, so this was the best I, <laughs> I managed to achieve. Okay, so we were releasing for several days when there was a new version. And what the market want? The market want simply to be fast. They want to release as soon as possible. So if I should talk with numbers, we were releasing for about three days. And the management, they wanted to, to switch our mindset, to switch our way of ensuring the quality and make everything in one simple hour. So changing activities from three days to one hour, definitely you should change something. So we decided to improve our QA workflow. So you remember the steps that were executing before. And what we did, we simply added several additional steps. And now I'm going to briefly talk about every single step that you see. Automation of the test execution, machine management and provisioning, CI, CD, continuous delivery or continuous deployment, it doesn't matter, and the crystal visibility, the dashboard that uh, we managed to implement. And I call these steps QA Ops steps because, in my opinion, they're not usual tasks that one QA is dealing for. They require some technical expertise in order to implement, and they usually take some time. They can happen for one hour, they can happen for one day. You simply have to spend some efforts in achieving these steps in the, in the green uh, field that you can see. So remember, one step at a time. Don't start with everything all together, step by step, and you're going to achieve everything, believe me. So the first, what, what I did first? OK, I had this test. Uh, uh, I have this automated test and I was starting them manually. Okay, can, can I start them automatically? Meaning to, to execute automatically the automated test that you have. Of course you can. Most of the tools that uh, uh, are available nowadays, they have possibilities, they have a command uh, line interface that you can execute. So um, at my time, if I have to speak with um, tools that I was using, I was using Selenium ID, and I simply managed to 
uh, implement some bash scripts, some uh, bat files with which I was able to simply schedule my test execution. And the first way to achieve this is to use the tool built-in functionality. Of course, if the tool offers such functionality, and if it doesn't offer such functionality, to implement everything manually, like I did, simply by developing some scripts, bat files, bash files, and etc. And of course, to, to schedule them for execution. Okay, can we go further with the, this test execution? Of course we can. There are a lot of different tools uh, that you can see with which you can uh, implement and execute your automated test cases, like Jenkins, TeamCity, Travis, the most popular probably nowadays, the GitHub actions. So what I simply did, I created uh, Jenkins jobs with which I was able to execute my automated test cases. Of course, there were thousands, even more than thousands uh, of uh, Jenkins jobs that um, I was about to create. And again, manual creation of Jenkins jobs or uh, like GitHub actions is a tough work. So you need to think for a way to automate this. And for Jenkins, because I was using Jenkins, um, I selected DSL, which is domain-specific language with which I automated all the jobs that were needed for my test execution. And now, when there was a new version I was of the software, I was simply starting this Jenkins job and uh, uh, executing the test and looking for the results. Okay, uh, next, next step. This automation so far helped me to execute everything automatically, but in my case, I had thousands of test cases that automated test cases that I have to execute, and they were taking about eight hours on a single machine. What we can do in order to speed up the automation? Delete most of the automated test cases is the one of the answers. But uh, unfortunately, it was not accepted by the management. So yeah, I have to find a way to execute all the test case that I was executing before. And so if you have one machine and execute your test cases for eight hours, what will happen if you have two machines? You will execute them for four hours. And if you have eight machines or 16 machines, you're going to execute them for only 30 minutes. And that that's actually what we did. We managed to automatically create and manage our machines. And again, there are a lot of popular platforms with which you can achieve that, like Ansible, Puppet, Chef, Terraform. So using stuff like that, you can simply execute some infrastructure as code and build and provision your machine, execute the automated test cases, and once this is done, you can simply terminate your machines. Nothing special, but of course, what is the problem here? The problem is that when you design your automated test cases, you should be very careful and you should try to build your automated test cases in using the best, uh, um, the best practices, like to, to have the test uh, to be either IDEP independent and IDEP potent, which is a very strange word. So uh, you should be sure that you can execute your automated test case in parallel. This is very important because if your test cases are not in independent, you will not be able to take the benefit of this step. Okay, now, once you have everything, all the stuff automated, you simply need to connect everything logically in some pipeline. And this is the so famous continuous integration pipeline or continuous delivery and continuous deployment. Actually, the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment is very small. Uh, whether the last step, which is 
deploying to production environment will be automatic or will be manual. So here is sample workflow uh, that we used in our team. And I guess most of you are familiar with it and what was actually happening. Once the developer commit any change, made any change in GitHub or GitLab or any continuous integration system, the automatic execution of unit test was happening. And if everything was green, meaning all the tests were passing, we were simply switching to the next step, which is execution of the integration test. And if everything is again green, going to the next environment and executing the next kind of test like uh, uh, access, um, acceptance test, end-to-end -end test, uh, UI test, performance tests, if you have all kinds of tests. And why you're doing this? Simply to build more confidence in your software. So we managed to achieve a workflow which by simply committing something and merging it to the main branch or master branch, we were able to deliver this automatically to the client in one simple hour. Of course, this is taking time to achieve it. And in my opinion, the QA work is very interesting, very hard, and we as a QA are doing great stuff. So what I wanted to achieve with one step is to build crystal visibility and make awareness of everything that is happening in the team at every single time. And the idea behind this was to be visible to everyone, from the QA, to the developer, to the project manager, to the uh, management, everyone who was interested in what is going on at any given point was able to see this. And I achieved that with one software, which is called Dashing. Here is how it looked like. And uh, you can see the different kind of tests, different kind of environments that uh, uh, is showing what is happening uh, at any given time. And well, you are able to access this using a simple URL. And we simply bought one TV, not that big, smaller one, because we don't have a lot of money, and put this TV in the room. So everyone which came into our room was able to see <laughs> what is happening. And you can see the dashboard behind us on the television. And actually, this was the initial version of, the, of our dashboard. Uh, and you can see how it looked like now. So step by step, adding more and more tests, more and more stuff like bugs, like uh, deployment activities, and etc. But why we take why we take this picture? Because everything was green for first time. <laughs> yeah. And well, probably you can see there are one girl in the dashboard, and actually this was the most interesting for the developers. And that was the reason why they are looking at the television at all. So this was the last step that we managed to achieve. And so you remember that the title of my presentation was The Magic Happened. So where is the magic? We used to have one developer in our team, very nice guy, which was always challenging the QA. Uh, asking us as a QA to do everything with the press of big red button. So every day when this guy came to work, he was asking where is my big red button. I want to press the button and everything to happen automatically. Well, I guess uh, this guy was underestimating the skills, the motivations and the madness of the QAs where we can uh, uh, go. and. One day, when he came to work, he found this on his, on his desk. And this was the big red button with all the kind, different kinds of tests, all the different environments. So you simply select what action you want and press the red button, and everything was happening automatically. Well, 
there is nothing special behind this box. It's using Arduino chipset. And actually, when you press the button, a Jenkins job was triggering. But actually, the QA team did it. And we managed to uh, achieve what this guy wanted. Well, you can see, <laughs> you can see that uh, it's a real box. Unfortunately, I was not able to take it here. <laughs> because <laughs> we're using it. So uh, this was my short presentation. Hope that you managed to, to like it. Yeah. Thank you.